Well, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there will be something that will be shared. That'll be a blessing to your life. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everyone. We want you to come on in, all of our Spirit of Fire people. We love you guys so much, all of our first-time visitors. Maybe you're clicking on for the very first time. Don't change right now. Don't go somewhere else. You're right here. God led you here for a reason today, and I believe that it's going to help you and be a blessing to you. So listen. I want you to do this. Go ahead and share it with as many people as you can. Share it to your social media platforms. Share this message. Share this video. This is your way of inviting people to church this morning. So listen, just put it on out there. You never know who's going to click on that link. You never know who's going to tune in to listen to what God has to say. And so I believe there's going to be something that's going to be a blessing to their lives. I'm telling you, we have been in the pocket in this thing. I'm telling you, God has been releasing his grace, releasing this anointing, this blessing upon us, this, his wisdom, insight into the scriptures. We've been encouraged. We've been strengthened. Our faith is being encouraged. And so listen, why not, why not invite somebody in? Listen, if the food is good to you, you go to a restaurant, the food is good to you. Don't you tell somebody about it? So we want you to tell if this, these messages have been blessing you, let somebody know, tell someone, invite someone to come on in so God can bless them as well. Amen. All right, y'all. I want us to, you know, for all of our uh, first timers, I want to make sure I do this first. Um, if this is your very first time tuning in, we want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. And so if you would just listen, if you want to just put simply in the comment section that, hey, this is my first time tuning in, logging in. We just want to say, hey, how you doing? Just love on you. I know people want to be anonymous sometimes. You just want to tune in. That's OK as well. But we just want to love on you and appreciate you so much. And just say, hey, we, we just thank God for you showing up. There are many other platforms that you could be watching today, whether in person or online, but you're here today. You've been led here. For some reason, you came to this one. And so I think that God really has something in store for you. And we want to thank you so much. Also, giving a big shout out to all of our people in state, out of state, all of our e-church members. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, yesterday, we had our... Uh, just kind of like a meet and greet, welcoming new, our newest members on um, on board and into the ministry and uh, just giving a word or deposit. And listen, we enjoyed it. We had a good time yesterday. So uh, we for those that weren't able to make it, we did miss you guys so much. We will be having more and we will be doing more. And so we just thank God for you here for all of our first timers. Our vision here is as we manifest the love of God through act of goodness and kindness, our goal here is to teach people their authority, their rights and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, helping them to pursue their purpose and igniting a passion and fire for the kingdom of God. In other words, God's way of doing things. And so helping you not only to help you pursue your purpose and ignite that passion and fire, but to now reveal to the world who you are as a child of God, as a son and a daughter of God, that people will see you come forth in full bloom, in full glory that you will conquer every sphere of influence that God created you to conquer. You will fulfill your God-given purpose, discovering that purpose and walking in it and fulfilling it. And so we're here to help you do that. We're here to encourage you. We're here to strengthen you. We're here to promote you, to push you into your destiny. And so we think that, listen, I, I recommend this place to you. I recommend it. I, I believe that God has called us to this thing. I know that he's called us to this, not just believing along. I know he's called us to do this. And so with that has come a mandate to go teach his people who they are. And so we're being faithful to that. And we want to broaden our scope. God told us to build locally here, but also to think globally. And so he wants us to now take this message to the uttermost parts of the earth and to teach his people and to train them and to help support. And so we love to manifest God's goodness through active goodness and kindness. In other words, our outreach initiatives. We love to do outreach. We love to minister to the needs of people and we love to be a blessing to people. And that's one thing I encourage everyone. Find someone to do something good for today, whether it's paying for their lunch, whether it's going just to visit them or calling them up, say, hey, I was thinking about you. Whatever it is, any act of kindness that you can do, begin to do it for someone. Get into that habit of being generous towards God and generous towards others. And so as you begin to do that, that watch, watch how your life begins to increase. 
it begins to grow. Your influence grows. Your friendships grow. Sometimes, you know, as a scripture talks about he who uh, has friends must show himself friendly. And so it's important to show yourself friendly. If you're believing for friends, new friends, whatever, show yourself, reach out to somebody, connect with them, invite them to dinner, invite them to lunch, whatever it is, make a connection today and it'll bless your life. All right, y'all, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, we're going to jump into this today and I'm excited about it. And intercessors, I want you praying for me. I want you in agreement with me. Even as I'm preaching, I want this thing to come forth the way God has intended for it to come forth, that it blesses his people. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. Yeah, we thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of your word. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you for every ear being anointed to hear, every heart being open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We thank you in advance for it. We do cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. And Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the teacher. We acknowledge you as the comforter. We acknowledge you as the counselor. You're the one ready to give us peace. We declare and decree strength right now, the spirit of might. We declare right now clarity of thought. We declare right now healings are taking place, even as the word of God is being preached that you're confirming your word, Father, with signs following. And so we give you praise and glory for it. We thank you that you wreck our ignorance with your knowledge. We thank you right now that your peace is released, even as I'm preaching. We thank you that demonic forces are leaving people's lives, their minds, their homes, their children, their finances, their bodies. Father, we thank you right now for power being released today. Unprecedented power. We thank you for your glory being manifested. And we give you praise for it now. That Jesus will be glorified. The people will be edified. And so we give you the praise, the glory and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. All right, y'all, we have been dealing with in our series, I called it the triple threat. I called it dealing with these three aspects um, that we begin to see in the scriptures that God wants us to develop in these areas. He wants us to be mindful of these things in our lives. And these are the three major temptations that we all deal with. And so when we talk about this triple threat, I want to go to our, our foundational text and I'm going to pick up from here today because I really want to finish out and close out some things. And I really want to dig into this today that in first John chapter two, verses 15 through 17, first John chapter two, verses 15 through 17. And, um, I'll let you know the title as well. I just said the title, but I wanted to add an aspect to it. And it says this, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Then he talks about for all that is in the world, in this earth, in this earth system. It talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the father, but of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so we talked about, and we were beginning to talk about three major temptations that we must overcome in our lives on a regular basis as, as believers, as individuals in this earth to accomplish and to achieve what God called us to do. And so number one was the lust of the flesh. Number two, the lust of the eyes. And number three, the pride of life. And so we began to deal with the lust of the flesh. We talked about the lust of the flesh. And we even talked about this being legitimate needs, even legitimate needs that you have. But then there's a temptation to meet those legitimate needs a way outside of what the way God intends for us to meet those needs. And so if you need to, you can go back, look at the previous messages where I dealt with that in more detail. And so I think last week I kind of got stuck on dealing with temptation and, the, and the, the power of temptation, how to overcome temptations and things of that nature. And so one of the things I really want to lock into is getting to and starting off in this second area, this second level of temptation. And so because um, I know if I go back and try to recap everything that I'll get I'll get caught up in that. So I, I really want to stay on on point and I want to stay focused because God has called you to overcome temptation. 
Um, you've been graced to endure temptation, to overcome it so that when the things come against you, God always gives us a way of escape out of the thing that we're being tempted to do. And so now I want to talk about the lust of the eyes today. I want to I want to deal with this real quick. I want to deal with the lust of the eyes and then the pride of life. So now as we talk about the lust of the eyes and this is in verses six and seven, we're in Luke chapter four now, Luke chapter four, verses one through 14. And so as we begin to see this, uh, this, this, this time, this wilderness season for Jesus, um, verse one, it says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. This is after Jesus's baptism in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. And so now after he's baptized, he's endued with power. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. And now the Bible says he he's full of the Holy Ghost. He's full of this power. He's full of the person of the Holy Spirit himself. And watch this. He's walking in this power, going into a wilderness season. So he is already graced to go into this wilderness. And he was led by the spirit to go into this wilderness. And it's saying being tempted. That word being meant that he was being tested or qualified or proven to see what was in him, the quality of what was in him. And so that proving ground, the wilderness was his proving ground. So before he was introduced to the world in his earthly ministry, he endured these temptations 40 days and nights being tempted of the devil. So now he was being harassed by Satan. He was being tested by Satan. In other words, he was being proven by Satan to see the quality of who he was and what was in him. And so watch this. If Jesus wasn't exempt from these temptations, you and I aren't exempt from these temptations. And so if he overcame them, Jesus overcame the world. And now all of a sudden now he's taking the keys of death, hell and the grave. And now that once we receive Christ, we are raised together, seated together with Christ in heavenly places far above all principality and power. So we are equipped to handle the same temptations that he did. We're able to handle them. Okay. I wanted to deal with that real quick. So now here dealing with the lust of the eyes in verse, let's start in verse six. Um, well, I'm gonna start in verse, uh, five and it says this, and it says, and the devil taking him up into high mountains showed unto him all the kingdoms of the earth of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power or all this authority will I give thee and the glory of them, everything attached to it, the, the prominence, the honor, the recognition, all of this stuff that goes with it. For that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now, this is important because he shows them this is the reason why Jesus came back. Jesus came back to recover and to restore man to his rightful place where Adam was before the fall in the garden. And so now because of Adam's disobedience and transgression, Satan comes in and gets control of this world system. And so now Jesus comes to get back what Adam released or Adam forfeited. So this is why this is such a, a watch is a strong temptation because now Satan says, all you got to do, he says in verse seven, if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. This is the temptation. He's trying to get Jesus to get what Jesus legitimately came to get. But he, instead of watch this, him dying on the cross, Satan wanted Jesus to worship him which would have been a lot easier than dealing with the agonizing pain of enduring the cross. See, this was the easy route out, but you always know when Satan brings a temptation, even though it seems alluring, there's always strings attached. There's always, there's a payday that he's coming back for. And so when Jesus came, this is why this was a temptation. So watch this. If Jesus didn't have the ability to be tempted, he wouldn't have been tempted. So now just the fact that it showed this and it says you got to get the image of this. 
Sometimes I think we just read through scriptures. I'm a person, I, I think in color. I, 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 I think images. Whenever somebody says something, I get the image in my head. And I, I see the scenario and I think of a scenario. And sometimes we just overlook this like it was nothing for Jesus to deal with this, but it was a temptation. So it had to be something about it that was enticing to Jesus, that was alluring to Jesus to even consider to do it. See, you got to think about it from that standpoint. We just read straight through it like it was just so easy. And don't forget, the Bible says he endured this for 40 days and nights. It's not like just one moment Satan shows up and that's it. And he just overcame it and came out in the power of the spirit. No, he endured this constant harassment against his mind to say, do it a way other than the father's way of getting it done. And this applied pressure to Jesus. So you got to understand this. This is why he had to be full of the Holy Ghost. Because if he wasn't full of the Holy Ghost, he could not endure that intense pressure that Satan applied to him. Satan ain't send no demon. He ain't send no imp. He ain't send no principality of power. The devil himself said, this the one. I'm going to come and visit this individual. I'm coming to visit the Son of God myself. And see, you got to understand, think about how Satan works. Satan is flaunting this thing through G before Jesus' eyes. He's saying, I'll show you all of these kingdoms of the earth. And he said it like this. Watch this. Watch this. This is so important. He says, all the kingdoms of the world, he showed them in a moment of time. And the devil said, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me. It's already been given unto me. So he wasn't lying. It was given to him. So he had the authority to release it. Watch this. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. This was a temptation. This is why you got to be mindful. There are people in the earth who have submitted themselves to the lordship of Satan to now achieve areas of, of, of influence, of wealth, of riches. And so now watch this because, watch this, this is why the word of God, as I was meditating on this, this kept popping up to me. This is why scripture talks about the allure or the traps of riches and wealth because now if you don't do it God's way, and then he said it's harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, than it is for the camel to go through the eye of a needle. It's not impossible, it's just harder for someone. But watch this because if they've now achieved and accomplished certain things without the aid of God in their lives, then they'll say, why do I need him when I've already gotten what this world considers success without me acknowledging Jesus, without me acknowledging God? I'm an atheist. I believe in the universe, but I don't believe in the God of the universe. And so now all of a sudden now it's harder to win that person over, but it's not impossible but now this is why, too, the temptation is there for Jesus to just submit and say, OK, I can get this all back without having to endure this cross, without having to do it, this pain, without having to get the cat of nine tails, ripping out flesh off of my body, without having a crown of th thorns thrust into my skull, without having to endure all of this stuff, to be spit on, to endure the asphyxiation of the cross where I can't breathe and I'm drowning in my own blood and my airways are being blocked up. You mean all I gotta do is submit to you and I can have all of this? It's a temptation. It's a temptation. The same way God comes to you and says, if you do it my way, I'll give it to you. But then now the world comes and says, or a representative of the world may be led by Satan and watch this, enticed by Satan to come and seduce you to come and say, do it this way versus doing it God's way. And it seems so much easier. It seems so much fun doing it the Satan's way. Yeah. Everybody popping bottles. Everybody in the club. Everybody. Hey, yeah. We loving it. We living it up. But don't understand that there's a paycheck. There's an assignment. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. There is death associated or loss associated. What you don't see are the hangovers the next day. What you don't see that the lives that are destroyed because of just going in and out of bed. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm a real man. I'm hitting this one and hitting that one. And now you got all of this drama. And now when Satan comes back for payday, you realize it really wasn't worth it. I remember my mom said this to us years ago. Um, 
And, and I remember this statement, something happened in our family and she made this statement. She says, a moment of pleasure can cause a lifetime of pain. One moment of pleasure can cause you a lifetime of pain. Listen, people understand that when you deal with baby mama drama, baby daddy drama, all of that stuff. Yeah, it felt good when you were doing the do. But when it was all said and done, it didn't even last that long. And when it was all said and done, now you've been connected with this individual and the drama associated with them. And you wish you would have never even met them. All because you couldn't control yourself at that moment. The lust of the flesh. The strong desire. And so now God is saying this. He says, there's a way that I want you. Because now when we deal with the lust of the eyes, this is also dealing with, watch this, spiritual giftings. Because Satan tried to urge Jesus to use his giftedness for self-profit or to draw a crowd or to bring things to himself. The enticement of success and accomplishment apart from God. See, we understand that Jesus came back for what Adam turned over. That's why there was such a temptation. But watch this. It was easier for him to do that than to endure the cross. But watch this. It wasn't God's will for him to do it that way. So he had to say... <sighs> Even though the way of the father seems harder, it's the right thing to do. <sighs> Character ain't always easy. Integrity ain't always easy to do. Because it's easier to just succumb to what feels good versus to having enough strength and inward fortitude to say no. Ooh, everything in me is crying out to do it. But I got to have enough strength and resolve and say, nope, I, I got to do it the right way. I got to do it the right way. And listen, I get it. It's strong pressure to go against the crowd when the majority doing it this way. That's totally opposite of God. See, I know what it's like to be brought up in an environment to be around people that ain't living like you live and don't believe like you believe mock you. Because you ain't doing what they doing because you ain't out partying and clubbing and now, you know, making a joke, you know, you got to be in for the street light or you know what? Why don't you come do this? No, I understand. I thank God for it. There was so much I did not have to deal with just because of the decisions that I made. And I thank God for it. I'm not saying I was nowhere near perfect, but I thank God that he caught me at an early age that I won't caught up dealing with this one or that one and sleeping around and doing all of this stuff that I kept myself until I got married. I'm so glad. That's the thing that helped me to stay married is because God knew this was the first woman I connected with. This was the first and the only one that I've given myself over to. And so now it's harder for that covenant to be broken because of the level of connection because I ain't practiced divorce over and over again getting with this one breaking up with that one breaking up with that one and now all of a sudden it's easier to fight for what God has already joined together let no man put asunder see okay whoo I feel like I'm working this morning all right now watch this this is important. This is important. This is why I tell young people, I tell my children, I want them to know this. Don't let a moment of pleasure call a, cause a lifetime of pain. It's, it, it's worth it to do God's way. And this is what I believe right now. I'm going to say this thing. I think this thing coming up in me that God wants to show you. God rewards those that honor him. God, there is a reward coming for you because many of you have cried to God and said, God, I'm trying to do it the right way. I'm trying to do it the way they are teaching me. I'm trying to do it the way that you are saying. Sometimes it's hard because I'm in this bed burning with passion and desire. I want somebody. I need somebody. I'm feeling horny. I'm feeling all this stuff. I'm feeling lonely. I need this. But God said, if you just hold on and you get in me, get in my presence, get active, doing something. I know the pressure is on you to do it another way. See, see this, 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 how Satan works. The pressure is go ahead and do it. Ain't nobody going to know. Go ahead and do it. It's okay. You'll feel good afterwards. But what he's doing is, is trying to lure you in and entice you to trap you and to get you in a vicious cycle. Then it brings condemnation with their strong guilt. Where there's see conviction brings you to God. Condemnation draws you away from him. 
And now it's like, God, I don't even feel like I can come to you. I feel the shame of this stuff now because I didn't do it your way. But God is saying, baby, I've forgiven you. Son, I've forgiven you. It's okay. Just get back into my rhythm. Yeah, you made a mistake. Man, I made some dumb mistakes over the years. But I thank God for his grace and his mercy to restore. Now, hear me. When God says I'm a restore, it's not necessarily to restore you back to where you used to be. It's to restore you to where you always should have been. You better hear me. See, see, see you got to hear that word. Restor A lot of times we think restore to go back to the former state. Yes, it's the former state. It's the former state of his creation, mankind. It's the former state of where Adam was before the fall came. That's the restoration. He wants us to go back to that intimacy with him where there was no sin consciousness. You better hear me. They walk. Listen, Adam walked and talked in the cool of the day with God. Him and Eve were naked before God and all they were had was the glory on them. But when sin entered in, their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked. And then they were ashamed of the nakedness. See, all of a sudden that consciousness of sin came in. And now watch this. God is trying to remove that sin consciousness so that you can be free to serve him. The reason why some of you are being hindered is because you're so conscious of your wrong doing or the wrong desires that is stopping you from moving into what God is telling you to do. He says, if you begin to walk in what I'm telling you to do and remember who you are, awaken to your righteousness and you won't sin. Some of you are afraid to sin. Some of you are afraid. What, we, what I mean by that, you're afraid you will fall back into the trap. And so the thing that you fear the most, man, is, is going to come upon you because you're in such fear of it. You almost feel drawn to it because of the fear. Okay, yeah, so this for somebody right now. I got to say this again. Cast that fear out of you. Cast that fear out of your mind. Say, I will not walk back into that thing. I am not afraid of it in the name of Jesus. And I command you to get the heck out of my mind, Satan. I command you to leave my mind alone and you will not allow me, you will not cause me to walk in this. I have victory and authority over this thing. I have victory and authority over every feeling, every desire, every urge, every craving, and I will not go back into it again. I ain't falling back into it. I ain't walking back into it. I declare that I am free and whom the son has set free is free indeed in Jesus name. And somebody type amen. All right. All right. Come on. Come on. All right. Okay. 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 Come on. I already knew. Come on. Who Jesus. Well, y'all working a brother, but God working some stuff. Who you talking about freedom? You talking about deliverance? I'm talking about this word being sown in your heart and it's going to spring up into everlasting life. It's springing up into your deliverance. It's remember that confession is made unto salvation. That your sozo, your soteria, that when you speak the word, when you speak life, that life is in force. You better hear me. You better hear me. This is true. This is the truth of the word of God. Speak your answer. Speak where you going. Speak what's happening. I'm telling you now. Set this thing up. Okay. 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 Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on. This, this just, who Jesus. I hope you're getting something out of this. All right. All right. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. One of the things you have to do is stop comparing yourself because that's a temptation of the lust of the flesh or the lust of the eyes where you begin to look and see other people's lives and it gets your attention on something else other than God's will for your life. And this gets you off course. What it also causes you to not have an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving because you see them balling and you think they balling. You don't even know everything that's going on. Some people that seem like they are smiling, they drowning because they're trying to keep up in appearance. Some are legitimate. But there are some that you don't know the pressures that they're dealing with behind closed doors. It was this uh, commercial that came out years ago. This guy driving uh, his riding lawnmower, cutting his grass. It's like, I'm drowning in debt. He had this smile on his face. It's like he in debt. Everything is crumbling around him. But he's, he's put on this big face. And that's how a lot of people are. Be thankful 
Be thankful for what God has blessed you with. Be thankful for the apartment. And I know you're looking at somebody else's house because what happened is you go there, look at what they have, and then come back and now disregard what God did. God's favor showed up for you to get that apartment. God's favor showed up to cause you to be able to handle, to obtain and to maintain without stress, struggle, or strain. And now all of a sudden you're so busy looking ahead that you can't appreciate where you are. And God says, I need you to be grateful for where you are. I understand not being complacent, but learning how to be content and learning how to have gratitude and your gratitude will help you even as you look at others and say, God bless them. I thank you for blessing them. Continue to increase them. And in the meantime, in between time, I thank you for what you've done in my life. I thank you for where I currently am and I thank you for where I'm going, but I'm not Watch this. The lust of the eyes will get you out of season and things and cause you to buy stuff. It ain't time for you to buy yet. Will cause you to move into stuff. You ain't ready to move in yet because God's still working on you at the place that you're in. You better be thankful. Don't nobody know your name yet because you still working on character issues. And God is saying, I need you to work on stuff behind the scenes so that I can promote you in front of the people so that now you can lead the people and lead them with confidence because you know, you ain't got nothing hidden behind closed doors and that Satan can't come to find nothing in you. And I'm telling you now, God is establishing in you such character and strength so that you can go forth with confidence. You can go forth with might and you can go forth with power. Now, come on. Don't get off course. Also in this area of the lust of the eyes, Satan will bring seduction and try to entice you with prom promises of prominence, money, power, respect, he will use kinks in your armor against you. This is why it's important for you to begin to develop character in private. So that it's easier for you to handle yourself in public. If you deal with lust in private, it's harder to be in, in do, uh, enticed in public. It, it, it's, it's, if you've already set certain standards for your life, be mindful. Because I'm going to tell you something. The anointing is attractive. The anointing is attractive. And when you're functioning in your grace and your calling in your anointing, it's called to draw. It ain't about you looking all good and being the finest, the flies or whatever. It's just a thing that people sometimes don't even understand why they're attracted to you, why they're drawn to you. It's God's ability on you to draw for increase in growth and development, to have influence. And you know, when you go out there, it's real easy for Satan to try to bring someone in. And this is why it's important to deal with insecurities in your life. So that if somebody, you got to listen, you got to learn how to affirm yourself. So that when people come with a flattering tongue, it doesn't easily seduce you. See, if you don't have self-confidence in the sense of knowing who you are in him, anybody can come and seduce you. Anybody can come and trick you into thinking something. Listen, you can you can spot a joke a mile away. It's like I already know. Oh, you're so beautiful. I know. Now I'm not trying to say it from an arrogant or cocky standpoint, but a level of confidence. So it's like, oh, really? Because nobody ever said it to you, or you never said it to yourself. So now you're looking for outside sources to affirm you. I know it's important for people, yeah, and people close in your life, but it got to come to a point where you know who you are. You know who you are, so you're not easily seduced and enticed. Let's keep going. <laughs> we must discipline our flesh and not allow it to run wild and rampant. Whether it's our temper, sexual desires, money habits, Inabilities to say no. Or your need to be a people pleaser. That'll destroy you just as much as you sleeping around with somebody. The fact that you saying yes to everybody and is wearing you out and you drain and you empty. Now you worn out and all of a sudden there's no joy left in you. And now because everybody done sucked the life out of you. Now you tired, you ready to give up. And when you tired, that's when Satan comes in for the attack. That's how he does. That Negro don't play fair. He don't play fair at all. 
He will try to catch you at your weakest moment. But listen, we're going to declare in Jesus name that we are not weak because we're going to walk full of the Holy Ghost. We're going to walk full of the power. We're going to walk full of the glory in the name of Jesus. I know sometimes a message like this ain't always the most exciting, but this thing is necessary. We got to understand these are these three major li three major temptations. We talked about the lust of the flesh. We talked about, too, even Jesus being tempted 40 days and nights and he was hungry. Satan caught him and said, command the stone that it might be made bread. But God didn't want him to do that. He didn't want him to use that power for that at that moment. See, sometimes there'll be that temptation of, you know, the seduction of self-promotion. That goes into number three, the pride of life. The pride of life is personal worship in verses nine and 10. And it says this, that Jesus. Now, each time that Satan uh, tempted Jesus, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. He kept coming with the word. He kept speaking the word. He kept declaring the word. Whatever temptation came, he now had the word to capture the thought and bring it into subjection. And then verse nine says that he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, he kept saying this, if thou be the son of God, trying to play on his identity, trying to see, does he have an identity crisis? Do you have an identity crisis? Well, if you that, it's like, you know, you ever been around people and you ever seen people getting ready to get into a fight and you can tell they really don't want to fight, but it's the people that's in the background urging them on. You going to let them talk to you like that? Or if you was a real man or if you was for real, for real, you wouldn't let anybody do that. Don't let them punk you. And the whole time it's like, all oh, that's what Satan is trying to do. And if you really know who you are, you are drowning all of those voices. Uh, uh, you going to not make me do this. I remember, um, Years ago, I was working at this company. We had a company picnic. And I, I never forget this. My son might have been about uh, four, maybe three, four. I forgot how old he was at that point. He's young, real young. And he came out and he was there. I think my wife brought him out to the park. And we were playing kickball. And while we were playing kickball, I was turning it up. I mean, home runs every time I got there. I mean, I was going for it. This one time I did and I strained my hamstring pulled it running to first base and that thing was hurting. So I wanted to ask somebody to, to go in for me. I had a couple of guys, a couple of coworkers like, Mike, what you doing, man? You got to get out there, man. Don't do this in front of your son. Don't, don't look soft. Come on. And I'm like, dude, I said, this is a company picnic. I was like, what kind of foolishness is that? That ain't, that ain't wisdom. I was like, man, I ain't gonna go out there and further injure myself trying to prove something to people who don't care about it anyway. I don't care what these folks think about me. And truth be told, I don't care what y'all think about me. See, I had to have enough resolve to not further injure myself, trying to prove myself to something that didn't mean nothing. And it's like, no, what I'm really teaching my son is the wisdom to sit your tail down and not further injure yourself. If you see that this stuff ain't even worth it, it's like, come on. That's wisdom because I got to heal. It's like, come on. And sometimes we try to do stuff to please people and it causes further injury because you're trying to prove something. You ain't got to prove none of them. Some of you, that's part of your motivation for your success. I'm going to show them. It ain't, see, your motivation wrong. It ain't even about showing them. It's about pleasing your heavenly father and doing what he called you to do. So if that means you got to be quiet for a season, that's his will for you to get some things worked in you and through you. That means you sit your tail down and shut up and not try to self promote. If it ain't your time to be promoted, because this is what it does. Now watch this. He tried to get Jesus to get ahead by linking up with a power other than God. And this, and this is, this is what Satan did. Look at what he did in verse 10. Satan himself said this. He says, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up. Least at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Satan is using scripture against Jesus. So just because the scripture popped up, you still got to judge it. I remember this elder told me years ago, she said, Mike, because Satan can't get you on some sin or something, he'll use your heart to do good against you. I never forgot that lesson. And it'll wear you out. And he'll do that just as much as anything else. 
because you think you're doing the right thing and you wearing yourself out. Got everything out of balance. And she was teaching me. She was like, go home to your family. It was like the ministry will go on without you. I was like, what well, dog? I was like, but it was what I needed to hear. I had two young children at that time. A wife freshly married. Got pregnant two months after we got married. <laughs> it's like, no. We're twins. Two babies. <laughs> so, and watch this. Satan will try to even, see, that, that's the thing. Because you don't know how to set boundaries, he'll use that because now it's all about you. This is why I, I still, I get the message. We got to watch stuff about the grind, the grind, the grind. You know what? I'm team no sleep. Your body was not designed not to sleep. You're supposed to sleep. God created you that way. All I need is three hours. That means, man, I'm bald. I'm doing, yeah, I'm serious about this thing. And wearing your tail out. People dying prematurely, trying to accomplish something and trying to prove something, not only to God, but to themselves. You got to learn how to become cool with you again. Or if you've never done that, you got to be happy with you. Do you like being with you? Huh? Or do you always need a crowd around you? Do you always need people around you to drown out the insecurities that ring in your head when you quiet? People, some people don't like silence because of the stuff that starts running. You get to thinking in. But now you got to learn how to quiet that stuff down with the words that come out of your mouth so that you're not scared to be alone. Man, man, that's a word right there. I felt like that was a word right there for somebody. Well, you can be cool with you. Then God can introduce somebody to you. Mm -mm. Now, watch this. When we talk about personal worship, when we talk about the pride of life, this happens when you trust in your own power, ability and resources. Now, hear me out when I'm saying this. I ain't got much time. Hear me out when I'm saying this. We got to be mindful of self-confidence. Hear me when I'm saying this. Yes, you have confidence in the ability that God has given you. And you got to believe that you can do things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, that's what that scripture means. I can do it, but it's through Christ. So when I'm not doing it in and of myself, this is why I, I get, it irritates me a little and a lot sometimes when I hear people say I'm self-made. I'm a self-made millionaire. I'm a self-made billionaire. It's almost like I did it. Nobody else helped me. I did it all by myself. And nobody does anything worth that's successful in life, that's truly successful by themselves. It ain't just you. So stop listening to those voices. Because what that stuff does is it gets you, I don't need nobody else. Long as I got King Jesus, I'm, and hear me, I know Jesus is enough, but he uses people in this earth. I know. No man is an island to themselves. You were not designed to do life alone. You are going to need help. And see, prior to say, I don't need help, I got it. Knowing you're struggling. And you're going to have to submit yourself and say, I need help. That's going to be, so for some of you, the most powerful conversation you can have with some people that God has told you who to go to. And you know what? Ooh, when it comes to this pride thing, I done been there. God will take you to somebody you definitely don't want to talk to. To get the answers from. To kill that pride that's in you. That means I got to let them know I ain't got it all together. Because I done put this image up and I'm all cool. I'm all together. I'm all pristine. Hair laid right. Everything look good. Car clean. Put the right outfit on. And then on the inside, you miserable and struggling. Oh yeah, God, listen. I'm like Mr. Rogers. I'm coming into your neighborhood, baby. God dealing with some things. Because you've done this stuff and you built this image. And so now you see that what you've built don't last because it's been built on wood, hay and stubble. It ain't been built on the right stuff. And God is saying, I'm stripping you of all stuff that ain't of me. This is why you going through the refiner's fire, baby, to burn up everything that ain't been of him. And when it's all said and done for some of you, God is relaying foundation. And this time around, this thing is going to be developed so deep in you that now watch this. 
The deeper the foundation, the higher the building and the stronger. And watch this. The bigger the building, the more solid the foundation has to be. The stronger the structure has to be. And what God is doing, God has to let some of you know that I'm bringing the team into your life. I'm bringing people into your life. And you're going to have to identify who are, who's a part of the permanent structure and who's just scaffolding in your life. Scaffolding is designed to help while you're doing the construction construction of the building to keep things in place. But when the building is completed, the scaffolding leaves. There are some people assigned to your life just for a season to get the thing built, to get you on track and God to expedite this thing. God's going to bring you supernatural help in the seen and the unseen realm to get this thing done. Yes, it should have been done 20 years ago, but God is saying, I'm going to pick up the pace. I'm going to get you in position. And if you You'll trust me and believe me and get the pride out of your life. You're going to have to have conversations with people. You're going to have to submit to people that you didn't want to submit to before because you're so used to being the one in authority. But to be in authority, you got to be under authority and you got to know how to submit because the all flows from the head down, not from the feet up. And you got to get up under somebody. You got to get up under the word of God. You got to get up under the spirit of God. And you will say, well, I got the whole Holy Spirit too, but God didn't call you to be that position in your life. He called you to submit to somebody. He called you to submit to a fivefold ministry gift. He called you to listen so that now you can be released in power. You can be, re be released in authority and you can be released knowing that I'm covered because I did it God's way. Who Lord. Somebody said, preach black man. I said, doggone it. I think I will. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't tell me who you over until you tell me who you under. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got the right one. You remember that old uh, Ray Charles? You got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. Yeah, there you go. You got the right one. You got the right one. And I'm telling you, Jesus teaches this to every leader that the first person you need to lead is you. The first person you need to lead is you and that you learn, you earn the right to lead others when you start dealing with areas in your life. See, when you're tempted, see, that's why I said it again, in pride, it feeds on your insecurities. You got, you got to become secure in who you are because when you're secure in who you are, you can promote other people. It's like, I know what I got. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? It's like, I, I'm, I, it doesn't intimidate me to see you shine. It doesn't. Now, was I always like that? Mm -mm. I'll be straight about it. Nope. Wasn't always like that. Sometimes part of you would like to see somebody not do well because then it made you feel good about yourself. That's foolishness. That's selfishness. That's self-centeredness. I should want to see my brothers and sisters win. We all win. Glory to God. We part of the same team, the body of Christ. We supposed to win. Uh, -uh. Now it hurts me to see others like, oh, Father, I pray for their success. I pray that you turn that thing around. I go into prayer for people. My attitude has completely changed. And what that does to is if you don't watch it, some people don't like to see others shine because now it puts a light on your inadequacies or your lack of faithfulness, skill sets, or obedience to what God told you to do. You can have the same level of success if you just do what he said to do. You got to be ready for it. And see this stuff, <laughs> when you walking in pride, and I'm ha. Ah, when you walking in pride, And I said this earlier, it will pull you out of God's timing and his season. It's like, I think David said, oh man, I wish I could remember the scripture. Well, but let me paraphrase what I, it's almost like a prayer of Lord. I don't want anything outside of your timing and your season for my life. No matter how good it looks to me. Some of you like what others have, but you don't know to wait 
that it takes to carry that. See, I've seen behind the scenes with things I've seen around, you know, what our past, our man and woman of God, death threats against the family. So security got to walk around with them because of the fact of what they're doing in the kingdom of God and the impact they're making in the world. And Satan don't like it. People calling the church with bomb threats. And all of that stuff, the persecution that comes when you're elevated. Jesus said the hundredfold comes with persecution. You crumble as somebody made one comment about you on Facebook and you all the pieces. You can't handle no high level yet. You ain't even conquered that yet. Oh man, I put out a, a reel the other day. I loved it. Somebody came on and said something, threw a little shade at me and said something stupid. I started laughing. I was like, yes, my first hater off this thing. I love it. I said, oh shucks, that means I'm doing something. You see, see, that's when you know you're getting on Satan's territory. When he starts attacking you to stop your momentum, because if I allowed him to get momentum, ain't no stopping him. And I'm telling you now, you boy, I heard Lord Jesus. You about to run that joker over like a bulldozer. Who you talking, boy, you talk, man, you got to hear, man, I sense that thing. Glory to God. I'm talking about such power. This authority we walking in. Oh, oh, shoot. You better hear me. You better hear me. When we start talking like this as the body of Christ and walking in this authority and power and confidence, oh man, stuff will be removed out. It'll be, it's like a mountain being made into a plateau. Oh man, you talking about, ooh, not just casting a mountain away. I'm talking about speaking to it and it obliterates it and wipes it out of your path. That means it's being destroyed. When something is destroyed, its usefulness exists no more. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the Bible says the anointing shall destroy the yoke, not break the yoke. To destroy means its usefulness exists no more. Something that's broken can be fixed. Something that's destroyed can't be put back together. You better, man, you better hear me. This unholy, oh, glory, glory. This anointing going to grow on you where it expands to the point that the yoke that was around your neck is removed because of the fatness of the anointing. That's what it says in Isaiah 10 and 27. I'm telling you, the fatness of the anointing. <laughs> hey, 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 glory. Yeah, yeah, you need to say I'm a fat Christian. I'm listen, I'm faithful, I'm available, able, and teachable. I'm telling you, I'm walking in this thing. I'm walking in this thing. I'm going to be consistent in it. I'm going to be powerful in it. I'm going to overcome the lust of the flesh. I'm going to overcome the lust of the eyes. I'm going to overcome the pride of life. And these things are constantly coming at you. And so you're going to have to grow to recognize what it is. No, I'm not going to try to meet a need outside of my God. Nope, I'm not going to get my attention on something that's going to lure me and entice me away from the will of God for my life. I got to set my face like a flint and I got to stay focused and I got to have laser focus. I'm not going to be prideful. I'm going to be humble. I humble myself under the mighty hand of God. And in due season, he elevates me and I'm cool with my due season. So I, now my prayer is father, I don't want to delay the development process. Because my due season will be delayed if my development is delayed. And so I want to overcome whatever I need to overcome. I want to conquer whatever I need to conquer. I want to show consistency, whatever I need to show consistency in. And I don't know the time frame. But when God sees your faithfulness and consistency and sees that you ain't getting off of it, he said, now they ready. Glory to God. Man, I'm done. I got to stop. I got to shut up. Man, this thing, Lord Jesus. I don't know what's going on in me and in this ministry, but I know it's good. It's this thing is growing. God is getting us ready for something and you got to get ready. All hands on deck. We all in. Ain't nobody left behind. I declare the blessing on everybody. You hear me? I mean, everybody, everybody. 
Everybody connected to us growing. Everybody connected to us blessed. Everybody connected to us increasing. I command the spirit of fear to leave you now in Jesus name. Get the heck out of here and go back to hell from which you came. Now, Father, we praise you for it in Jesus name. Amen. And the church say amen. Lord, I wish I was around us. Man, I feel like, man, I, I bored Lord Jesus. <laughs> Put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. We adore you and we glorify you. Let this word be confirmed and sealed into our hearts from this day forward and in our minds in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. And if there's somebody out there today, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You not made him Lord of your life. Come on into the family of God today. It's as simple as saying this prayer after me. The Bible declares this, that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God is raising from the dead. You shall be saved. Right. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Meaning, watch this. When you believe this, you've been made right with God. You're righteous. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Jesus. Make you, I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for creating in me a clean heart. And for renewing a right spirit within me. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him. All the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Also. There's an experience subsequent to salvation. Called the baptism with the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking with other tongues. It's nothing to be afraid of. Some of you have maybe heard of this experience. Yeah, sometimes you've seen people act different ways. Because of different expressions. Through different individuals. But the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He wants to come to abide in you and to live in you and dwell in you to give you power to live this life for Christ. He's going to give you this ability to now overcome the temptations of the world, to overcome um, areas in your life, to help you with the inadequacies, inadequacies, the insecurities, to teach you, to help you understand the word of God in the scriptures. He's there as a counselor, as a comforter, to give you wisdom and guidance, to show you what to do in your life. Let us help you know him in a better way to teach you how to function in this lifestyle in Christ. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to pray right now, just real quick. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. I receive you on the inside of me. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues. As you give me the utterance, in Jesus' name, amen. Now begin to lift up your hands and come on, let's begin to pray together. Open up your mouth, add voice. He's going to help you pray, but you do the talking. Out of your belly, the Bible says, shall flow rivers of living water. Everybody else, I want you praying. You never know who's going to be watching, whether it's live, whether it's on replay, whatever it is. I want y'all praying for individuals to come in to hear this word. There you go. There you go. There you go. Power, power surging through you. Power, the love of God, the power of God flowing through you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Okay. 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 Now listen to me. Lastly, but certainly not least, if you don't have a church home and God is leading you to join this ministry right now, I know we're virtual. We will be coming in person. But I want it's important to get connected. It's important to make a decision. You know, sometimes it's people like, well, I want to be connected, but I don't want to make a commitment. There's no commitment. There's no connection without commitment. Oh, man, that's good. Sometimes what happens is it's just like a person that you go, you dating for a long time, but that guy never wants to marry you. It's something about a man who wants to give his woman their last name. For men, that's that's big. 
A lot of men, you know, we always say they want, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Because watch this, there, I, there's no need for commitment. Because if you get everything without commitment, then it's easy for you to disconnect from it. Membership does have its privileges. It shows I've made a commitment to where God called me to be. Now, we're not legalistic and trying, you know, we ain't trying to run your life. And, you know, and I know everybody's had some people have had bad experiences. But God is saying this, you found a safe place. Make the commitment and watch what happens. Who Jesus. Who was it? Elijah, Elisha or Elijah told Elisha. Elisha said, I want a double portion of what you have. He said, if you see me when I go. You'll get the mantle that falls from me. In other words, you got to closely follow. If you want that grace, that anointing to come upon you in a double measure. And then even after Elijah went, Elisha, he functioned in that same anointing as his teacher, his mentor did. It's something about it. This grace on my life, you supposed to be walking in it. It ain't no good if it's just me walking in this power. I want to see you walking in it. It's time to tap into it. And you do that with three things. Three ways. Time, talent, treasure. But also your attitude and submission. What's your posture? When I mean that. It's important to connect because this is a place of family, a place of belonging. This is why we're spirit of our fellowship. It's a fellowship of people. The only prerequisite is that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is that you're a part of the body of Christ because church membership doesn't save you. But all it does is identify with this local body of believers to be developed, to understand who I am, to go into the world, to be who God created and called me to be. That's all. That's all. I know people have issues about organized religion. Everything God does is going to be organized. But I know people, listen, people are imperfect. The God that we serve is perfect. But the people aren't. We know that. We're not perfect by any means. But we understand that with connection comes power in your life flowing. Amen. You can take it for whatever, but I have to share that. For whoever's watching, make the decision. I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to connect. Or if you say, you know what? I want to find out some more information. Just reach out to us at connect at spiritofire.us. That's our email address that you can connect with us. Connect at spiritofire.us. If you want to send us a message on um, uh, social media platforms, Somebody from our connect team will get in touch with you to show you how to obtain, maintain, to give you information, what you need to know. But it's important. Amen. Well, I've given you those three things, salvation, baptism with the Holy Spirit, church membership. So at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. We call it opportunity for prosperity, where we honor God and worship him. We believe that worship in our giving is a part of the worship experience. Whatever God is telling you to do, do it. The Bible declares as you give, it'll be given good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. We've seen this principle work. As a man sows, that shall he also reap. Whatever God is calling you to do, then maybe somebody you already have, you have a church home and your tithe, I believe, should go to your church home. That should be the place of supply and sufficiency. That should be the place where you're being fed. But if, and I, and I do believe this, if we are people, even in the book of Malachi, it talks about bringing all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse is the place of supply. It should be that local church that you connected with. It may be a ministry that feeds you. And it qualifies a storehouse for you because they're feeding you the word of God. Some of you, you're being fed here. So we would qualify as a storehouse for you. But it's important that as you sow and as you give, it's okay to expect a return. Speak over that seed. Speak over it when you give. It's given to me again. Declare and decree it. Enforce it. 
in your life. That's how you water your seed. And this is how you tithe the tithe. Tithing the tithe is not just releasing the money. We used to call it back in the day, not bucket plucking. You just throw it in the bucket. But even from a digital standpoint, whether it's cash, out, Venmo, texting by giving, whatever, that you just release it. No, don't just release it, but speak over it and declare it. Father, I submit this unto you. Lord Jesus, as our great high priest, even as Melchizedek received tithes from Abram, that right now receive these tithes, gifts of love, as our great high priest. And we receive the blessing upon our lives. And we thank you that it maketh rich and you add no sorrow with it. And so we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's tithing the tithe. How you present it to God. Totally different. See, so you, you're mindful of it. It's, it's, it's coming from your heart. It's not about your money. It's about your heart. It's a trust relationship with God. It's a heart thing. Where your treasure is, the Bible says your heart is. So that's why it's so important. Amen. Well, there's information on the screen as to how you can give. Just honor the spirit of God. Glory to God. Well, y'all, I declare and decree increase over your life. Every seed sown manifesting hundredfold return, optimum yield in Jesus name. Amen. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. We here at Spirit of Fire are changing the culture, igniting the passion and living the dream. And we declare that the best is in store for you. We declare that God's favor is upon your life, and that everything you set your hands to will prosper, work and flourish in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. Love you guys so much. See you next time. Peace.